tap shifter install takes just a couple of hours with basic automotive tools. Let's go see how it works. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the negative battery cables under the hood here. Now we're gonna disconnect the uh, positive battery cable on the driver's side and remove the battery. Now for the battery cover, there's latches on the front and back. Just remove those, and the battery cover comes out. Eight millimeter socket on the hold down bolt, which is the tall bolt just between the battery and the fender. So with the driver's side battery out, that gives us access to the three PCM plugs. Uh, what we're looking to do is disconnect the one that's most forward. You just move the latch back and the whole thing comes undone. You'll have to strip a few inches of the electrical tape off of it to gain access to the wires. You also want to remove the little cover on the back of the connector. You can put the lever back where it came from and there's four little latches. Use a tiny screwdriver to undo those. All right, so next up, we're gonna feed our transmission wiring harness through the firewall and into the engine bay. To do this, we're gonna go through the spot where the clutch uh, master cylinder would have gone. That's this little silver plate down here on late model trucks. Earlier trucks have a rubber boot that you can pull out. So we've brought our transmission wiring harness through the firewall and routed it up to the driver's side battery. Now here we have a lot of wiring connections to make in the, uh, in the PCM connector. Pay very close attention to the wire colors and the pin locations also. As most of you may know, factories will often change wire colors just because that's what was going down the production line that day. So always double check your wire colors against the pin locations that are numbered on the connector itself. If you make a bad connection, the system's not gonna work right. So as you can see, what we've done here is use the supplied crimp connectors that have heat shrink already on them to connect into our PCM connector. Once that's done, I'm gonna wrap that up with electrical tape so it's protected and plug the connector back in. Put our cover back on, and then to reattach the connector, plug her in, make sure that this latch is clicked all the way forward. All right, with that done back up, we're gonna reinstall our driver's side battery. We're gonna do up the positive connection for now, but we're gonna leave the negatives until the job's done. With our negative battery cables undone, now we're gonna to move to the interior. The first thing to do is to remove the knee bolster. Later model trucks like this, all you have to do is pull it out. Earlier trucks, you'll find there's a few screws to undo. We also need to remove the three Phillips screws that go on the bottom of the steering column cover. And then we need to pull the ignition tumbler out. All right, next up, use a small hammer and a punch. We're gonna drive out the pin that secures the factory shift lever. And then the lever has its electrical connector. Unplug that, and then the lever lifts away. For the BD kit, we supply our little adapter here. That goes back into the original location. And then your new tap shift lever is installed into that. And the little hex screw secures it. And then use a T30 hex bit to tighten it. Now for the electrical connector, we again have a difference between early and late model six liters. This is a late model, but pay attention to your install manual because your truck might be different. With that done, we can reinstall our column covers. To get the key tumbler back in is really easy. Just have the key in it, reinsert it, and turn it back to the off position. run the connector for the display module up to where you would like the module to be mounted. Now most people mount it to the top of the steering column. You can also go on the edge of the dash cluster here, or if you want to, you can extend the wires, put it on top of the dash, or even up top, it's your choice. For our purposes, I brought it through to up top of the column here. All right, next up, we're gonna put in our OBD connection. Now we provide a male and a female OBD. What we're gonna do is dismount the original OBD those are seven millimeter bolts. We're gonna bolt ours in place 
and then plug the factory OBD connector into our female. All right, final thing to do, take our module, plug it into the gray connector, secure it under the dash. Last thing to do for the harness under the hood is connect the ground terminal. Most trucks will have a factory ground point uh, just on the inside of the fender here. You can use that. All right, now the last part of the job, reconnect the negative battery terminals. So as you can see, the install is pretty easy, taking just a couple of hours with basic automotive tools. One important thing to remember is that if you're going to reflash or reprogram your truck, the tap shifter's OBD connector should be removed and your tuner or scanner plugged directly into the factory OBD port. This will ensure that the tuner or scanner communicates directly with the truck. Thanks for watching.